Festive football is about to come to an end. Boxing Day, Christmas Day, New Year's Day. This is it. The last round of fixtures before the winter break. Who can win? Who can add three points to their tally in the league? And who will drop further behind? Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football for the match day. It's weird in the championship. We're on, like, match day 18, 19. In the premiership, we're on, like, match day 21, 22, I believe. But some clubs have got, like, three, four games in hand. So it's getting really confusing right now. There is only two uh, leagues on. So we've got the championship and we have the premiership. Going to have a quick look here at the Championship League table. And I think the, the thing to take away from this is the gap at the top has been cut by Dundee United. It was five points with a game in hand. It's now down to three points with a game in hand. And Rafe Rovers were 2 0 up in that last game against ninth place Arbroath. They can see that, don't get me wrong, a wonder strike from the Arbroath goalkeeper who was playing up front. But that could be a result that Rafe Rovers look back on, and it could be a result that potentially costs them the league. I think it's going to be down between Rafe Rovers and Dundee United. Partick Thistle, last time out, got a beat of Dundee United. They just don't really have what it takes. I think they're going to be third best of the rest. And then I think you're looking at probably the two promoted teams, Dunfermline and Airdrieonians, I think, uh, are most likely to be battling for that fourth spot. And you look at Greenick Morton as well. They've, they've done a great job because they were looking like they were down and out. But they've picked up some good results in recent weeks and now they find themselves sitting in sixth place. So it's weird how things can turn around. Queen's Park now look like they're the team in trouble. Let's have a look at the fixtures though. Let's see who can get themselves out of trouble. So first off we have Airdrie versus Inverness, Caledonia and Thistle. Airdrie have been on a good run. I think the whole Terry Butcher instant impact, the new manager bounce is beginning to wear off. That doesn't mean I think that Inverness are going to struggle or anything like that or that I think Terry Butcher is the wrong man for the job. I'm just not really as confident in Inverness picking up results as I was maybe a month ago when he was uh, more recently in the job. I'm going to go with Airdrie. I'm going to go 2-1 Airdrie Onions in that one. Uh, we moved to Gayfield Park, or both Dundee United. I don't really see Dundee United stopping at the moment. They're playing well. They're getting results. I think they'll continue to do that against Arbroath. I'm going to go 3-1 Dundee United. Then we move to East End Park. Dunfermline versus Rafe Rovers. Rafe Rovers top of the league. I think they're going to drop points here though. I'm going to go for a draw. I'm going to go Dunfermline 1, Rafe Rovers 1. And I, I think we will see Rafe Rovers uh, drop points unfortunately. Greenock Morton at the Cappy Low Park taking on Air United. Greenock Morton, decent run of form, playing well at the moment. I think they'll keep that going. I'm going to go Greenock Morton 2, Air United 1. And finally, Partick Thistle at Fur Hill. I'm going Partick 2, Queen's Park nil. Partick doing okay in third place. Queen's Park struggling at the bottom. I think their struggles, unfortunately for them, will continue with a defeat against Partick. But let's look at the Premiership table then. Obviously, we know how the last old firm went. Celtic extend their lead back to eight points, but Rangers do have two games in hand. And if they can win both of those games in hand, then obviously they will bring the gap down to two. Unfortunately for Rangers, though, they're going to have to wait a while to play those games. And you've just got that sort of mindset that you're behind. Even though you've got games in hand, it's not the same as having points on the board. You'd much rather, obviously have those points on the board and just bring you closer to Celtic. But there's not a lot Rangers can do. They're going to have to wait until February, I believe, to play those games. So no point crying about it. That handball, that's over. The The games in hand are over. Rangers just need to hold in there and see if they can close the gap once again. Uh, we move further back. Hearts in third place. Kilmarnock in fourth. Two points separating them. St Mirren, big win last time out. Moving up closer to those teams as well. And then we go down to... No man's land, really. We've got Hibernian, Dundee United, Mullerwell and Aberdeen, all within a few points of each other. Aberdeen do have more games in hand than anybody else, but they don't look like they're going to win those games at the moment. And I think Barry Robson could be one more bad defeat away for getting sacked. The European campaign has came to an end, and as good as Aberdeen did in that, as good as, as some of the results were great, some of the performances were great, but at the end of the day, that's over now. That you can't keep looking back in that. You can't keep giving him a pass because of what he did in Europe. It's all about domestic football now. 
He lost the Fire Play League Cup, and he's ninth in the league. It's not good enough, and on, his goal difference is minus 10 as well, so, I mean, that's not good. The minus 10 is shocking, especially when you consider they've only played 17 games. There's no, there's no, just no excuse for that. I know Celtic put six past them, but still, Aberdeen need to improve, and like I said, they could be one more defeat away from... <laughs> Barry Robson getting chopped, essentially. I don't mean dead, I just mean chopped. But look how close it is. Mullerwell, Aberdeen, St. Johnson, Ross County. Just one point separating those four teams. I know Aberdeen have the game in hand, but I just don't really see them winning them at the moment. And then Livingston, unfortunately, they're fucked. I, I just don't see Livingston. I could be wrong. Who knows? They could win this. They could win uh, against Hearts here, but I'm, I'm not predicting that whatsoever. So let's move on to the fixtures then. We have Dundee versus St. Johnston. St Johnston have done well since Craig Levine came in, but they're taking on a Dundee side that are also playing well. Picked up a point at Rugby Park. Not many teams do that. Very hard place to get points. I think that Dundee will just about nick this one. I'm going to go 2-1 Dundee. I think it will be close, but I'm going to give Dundee the edge. I'm going to go 2-1 to Dundee and a, a win at Dens Park for the home side. Moving into the next match, Easter Road, Hibernian, Mullerwell. I'm going to go with Hibs. I think Hibs will win this. I said 2-1 in the last game. I'm going to go 2-1 in this game as well. Hibs need to start winning if they want to try and get third place. A bad result last time against Hearts, losing in the last minute. Then their last game got postponed. So uh, yeah, they, they need to bounce back here. And I think they will. I think they'll beat Mullerwell. Motherwell have that one win against Livingston. After that, though, you're going a long, long way back before they picked up three points. So I am going to go with Hibernian to beat Motherwell. At the Tony Macaroni, we have Livingston taking on Hearts. Last place taking on third place. Who's going to win this one? Should be Hearts. Form-wise, Hearts are really good. Performances-wise, I don't think it's been great. But form-wise, in terms of results, it's been it's been good from Hearts. It's been great from Hearts. It's not been great for Livingston. It's been diabolical for Livingston. They're falling down at the bottom of the table. They don't look like they're going to get out of relegation. They don't even look like they're going to put up a fight right now. And I get it. One result can change things. One result can give you momentum. It can spur you on. It can be the beginning of a good run. But I just don't see Livingston getting it. Especially not here. I'm going to go with Hearts 2. Livingston 0. No. I think Hearts will keep a clean sheet. And I think they win by two goals to nil. And I'd, I'd expect Shankland to get on the score sheet again. Right, Ibrox up next. Rangers versus Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock's away form has been very good as of late. Four away games. In the last four away games, they have uh, got, what, eight points? Two wins, two draws. Haven't conceded a goal away from home. If that continues, there'll be a lot of unhappy Rangers fans because that means they will have dropped at least two points. Will it continue, though? I'm not sure. As good as I think Derek McKenzie's got Kilmarnock playing, I do think Rangers will bounce back. I also wouldn't be surprised if we see a penalty given to Rangers. I think that we might see Rangers get a, a beneficial decision because they didn't get it against Celtic, and that just seems to be how the officials work, and I, I am convinced that will happen. I think Rangers will they'll probably get a soft penalty, and that I expect that to, to be the case. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Rangers to win this one by three goals to one, and I think that... We'll probably see a penalty to Rangers in this match to try and make up for that disaster that happened at uh, Celtic Park. Ross County versus Aberdeen. Derek Adams, he likes good football. Will we get good football here? It's going to be it's a bit of a derby. It's, I mean, I guess geographically it's, a, it's the closest game Aberdeen and uh, Ross County have, you know, each other, obviously. Uh, Ross County are pretty good at home. I think they played okay under Derek Adams. I, I think they could get a result here. I really do at the Global Energy Stadium. And I think a result, depending on what result it is, could be the end of Barry Robson. I'm going to go with 1-1, but I would not be surprised if Ross County win this. I'm kind of tempted to switch it to 2-1 County, but I I'll stick with 1-1, because I, think, I just think, I think a defeat would maybe, I think a defeat would get Robson sacked, and I just don't know if he's ready to go. But I tell you what, this would be a good time to replace a manager. You're going to have a bit of three-week break after this game. That's a good time. It gives you enough time to bring somebody in. So I definitely believe if Aberdeen do lose this, then they will they will depart with uh, Barry Robson. 100% believe that. And then we move on to the 5 o'clock kickoff game. It is St Mirren versus Celtic. St Mirren have caused Celtic problems over the past uh, year 
or two, they've always put up good fights, even in the games where they've been humped, it's mainly been due to going down to 10 men or some dodgy decisions going against them, so I expect St Mirren to put up another good fight here, last time they played, Celtic won the game late on, I believe it was 2-1, Celtic scored pretty late, I think it was O that got the winner that time, what will happen this time, can St Mirren continue their good run, they're coming off a 3-0 win against Aberdeen at Pataudry, can they get something against Celtic? I think they can. I'm going to go with St Mirren 1, Celtic 1. There you go. That's my prediction there. I think St Mirren will get a result. I think they're good at home. And they have, they've, you know, they've made Celtic struggle in pre previous fixtures. And I'm just not convinced Celtic are back to their best. I'm really not. I know they beat Rangers there. But Rangers are pretty shite. Like, let's be, just let's be honest. I mean, beating Rangers isn't, doesn't really mean anything. The last two games before that... Um, they beat Dundee and they beat Livingston. That's not great. Before that, Celtic played two pretty good teams, Comoric and Hearts, and lost them both. So, yeah, I I'm not convinced that Celtic have turned the corner. I'm not convinced that they're a great team now under Brendan Rodgers. And I think we might see them drop points here against St Mirren. So that's my prediction, guys. I'm going to go St Mirren 1, Celtic 1. Let us know your thoughts down below. I'll catch you in the next one. Been Fog Football. Catch you for the review show later. And uh, yeah, hopefully we get some good games of football, some good results, and hopefully no dodgy VAR decisions. Unless they're going in favour of my team, Hearts, then by all means, let it happen. Because we're due one. Alan Forrest fucking robbed there at the weekend. 100% apparently didn't get it. Officials, they need to they need to up their game. Uh, it's embarrassing. We bring in VAR, and there's no point. If you can't use it correctly, if you can't implement it right, then what's the point of having it? There's fucking no point. Anyway, guys, that's it. Catch you in the next one. Peace.